Hi, I'm Ben Peel, UK Managing Director at Portfolio Metrics, and I'm here with our Head of Investments, Nick Spicer. So Nick, second quarter was certainly uh, a little bit better than the first quarter. Yeah. It, it was indeed, Ben. Um, equities, corporate bonds, emerging market bonds, um, all bound sharply as central banks and governments provided truly enormous amounts of stimulus. Um, whilst in many countries, COVID-19 deaths peaked and then fell, which allowed economies to start to reopen. UK equities and cheaper stocks joined the rally, but in a more subdued fashion than faster growing companies in particularly the US. Got it. And in terms of defensive assets, it wasn't a bad quarter for them either, was it? No. High quality bonds also rose, albeit modestly, but gold was actually up 13% in, in dollar terms, which is quite substantial. Indeed. And what about currencies? Clearly, first quarter was a roller coaster ride with sterling very weak. How did things look in second quarter? Yeah, the pound fell quite a lot in the first quarter against most currencies, but in the second quarter, it was roughly flat against the dollar and the yen, uh, but it was down modestly 1.9% against the euro. Right, so, so more stability there, which is good. Um, in terms of across all the asset classes, can you give our advisor partners some insights as to how they perform relative to each other? Yeah, so the um, global developed equities, uh, as represented by the MSCI world, rose 19.8% over the quarter, which means they're up 1% year to date uh, in sterling terms. Uh, the FTSE 100 was up 9.1% uh, over the quarter, which means it's still down 16.9% year to date. Um, emerging markets, as represented by the MSCI Emerging Markets, uh, rose 18.5% uh, over the quarter, which means they're down 3.3% year to date. Um, the Bloomberg Barclays Global Aggregate, so uh, investment grade um, global bonds, uh, was up 2.3% over the quarter, um, meaning it's uh, they're up 3.5% year to date. Uh, and high yield bonds um, were up 11.8% over the quarter, uh, meaning that they are still down 5.3% um, year to date. So amazing to see the MSCI world now back in positive territory for the year. So some very sizable moves mm -hmm. there. You did mention that UK equities relative to other regions, the recovery there was uh, a little bit more subdued. Uh, are there any other patterns or insights that you would want to pick out within equities to make our advisor partners aware of? Yeah, there was quite a lot going on beneath the surface. So if you, if you remember that over the quarter, um, global developed equities were up 19.8%. Um, but growth, so more expensive equities actually rose quite a bit more. They were up 26% over the quarter, so that's 6% more. Um, value um, equities, so cheaper equities, they rose only about 13% um, over the quarter, which is 7% less than the broad index. Uh, and smaller companies, which are, had a very tough first quarter, they also bounced quite strongly. They were up 25% over the quarter, so 5% more than the broad index. Right. So growth continues to outperform versus value. Can you give our partners some insights as yeah. to how the portfolio metrics portfolios are positioned um, and how they perform by comparison during the quarter? Yeah, absolutely. So select one, our lowest risk portfolio was up 5.9% over the quarter, net of all investment fees. Um, select four, our mid-risk portfolio was up 13%. Uh, and Select 7, our highest risk portfolio was up 17.8% net of all investment fees over the quarter. Uh, it's also worth noting that our sustainable world um, approach, uh, formerly known as ethical, ethical emphasis, um, these portfolios did particularly well, uh, given their quality growth focus. So the mid-risk profile there, profile four, was up 12.6% over the quarter, um, leaving it actually slightly positive for the year. Also worth pointing out that we, we have um, a white paper on the topic of ESG and responsible investing coming out fairly soon. So if you're interested in the topic, uh, please watch out for that. Good stuff. So you know it's been a big quarter when the lowest risk portfolio is up 6%. Uh, and certainly on the yeah. on the responsible investing, very excited to see that white paper coming out shortly. So uh, beyond that, I guess I'm going to ask you a very difficult question. Um, we've had a strong bounce in markets. Will the markets hang on to those gains? Uh, and what does the future hold for markets and asset classes as a whole? Yeah, it's a big question. What next? Um, the answer mostly depends on how effectively we can suppress the virus um, from here and get economies moving again. Uh, markets have bounced significantly and they are pricing in quite a bit of a V-shaped economic recovery. Um, and we just have to take account of the fact that COVID-19 cases are still rising in 
you know, emerging markets, for example, and the US has seen um, quite a resurgence of cases. Um, and although we're getting better at treating the, um, the virus, and there's about 200 vaccines in the works at the moment, we still don't have a definitive cure or successful vaccine yet. So alas, I can't give you a short-term direction. It's fairly balanced at the moment. Right, so we're not out of the woods on the COVID front. Um, any other risks which we should be watching out for? Yeah, absolutely. So as fears of the virus have actually receded somewhat, um, some other risks have actually resurfaced. So US and China um, frictions have actually re-emerged and potentially they'll get worse as we approach another big risk for the year, which is the uh, US um, November uh, elections, actually presidential elections in November. Uh, then again, Brexit has also kind of resurfaced, uh, resurfaced as an issue. So um, the UK still has to negotiate that um, um, trade agreement with um, the EU, uh, its biggest trade partner, um, before the end of the year. I mean, other risks and how you're responding to them, how is the team positioning portfolios at the moment? Yeah, we haven't made many fund changes over the quarter, but we continue to actively research new funds, and that actually should start to um, lead to some fund changes um, um, in this quarter. Um, it's worth noting, though, that we have actually still been rebalancing portfolios over the previous quarter, um, Q2, um, which has actually been very beneficial to um, returns. Absolutely. So rebalancing is definitely a key topic that you wrote really well about it in our June monthly, so the impact it can have. Um, can you give us a few more details there? Yes, absolutely. So we rebalanced the majority of client portfolios um, in mid-March um, as the um, markets had sold off a lot. So we were topping up exposure to equities that had fallen quite sharply. Um, this was very supportive to the performance in the second quarter. So um, having topped up equities um, uh, at the end of the first quarter, as markets bounced significantly in the second quarter, that actually helped a lot. Um, and it, the, to the extent that it does actually help each individual client, it depends. But when we look at it in terms of the tracking portfolios that we actually maintain, um, there was a benefit of between 0.2% and 1.4%, um, just based on that sort of uh, March rebalance. Um, interestingly, uh, equities actually rebounded to such an extent that we have recently been rebalancing again. Uh, but this time, we've actually been trimming equity holdings after their strong bound, uh, rebound um, to keep risk in line with uh, mandate levels. So this should give advisors and, and their clients just some reassurance that the portfolios are being actively monitored all the time. Um, and um, we are going to be rebalancing to squeeze out any extra returns and, and keep risks um, within uh, mandate tolerance. Um, that's all part of what we do at Portfolio Metrics. Fantastic. So clearly it's a dynamic process. It's being monitored daily and it does generate extra returns. So this is very useful for um, the end clients of our advisors. So any final thoughts in the quarter to share with our advisors? Yeah, I think that the key thing I'd stress is just that, um, yes, there is a lot of uncertainty out there, but the flip side of risk is, is actually opportunity. So a second coronavirus wave is, is by no means a certainty. And should the recovery go more smoothly um, than that, um, and then people expect um, equities should continue to do very, very well. So we are actually maintaining diversification across asset class, investment style, currency, countries, fund managers to help with the risks. But given the opportunities actually out there at the moment um, in portfolios, we, we, we think they're very well positioned for the future. So, Nick, thank you as always for your views and for your insights. Uh, thanks to all of you guys for listening. And if you have any questions which you'd like to be covered in our next quarterly video, please send them through to Nick or I. Uh, and beyond that, just remain to say that from all the team at Portfolio Metrics, we hope you and your families are keeping safe, keeping well, uh, and we wish you the very best for the rest of the year. Thanks.